Hunter x Hunter episode 15. 115. It gives me so much joy. Oh, also terror. Joy and terror. Get him, Anisuka, I mean. <laughs> we're gonna save Shoot in spectacular, glorious, heartwarming fashion. And we're not gonna die. I don't think I've ever had this experience where my connection to a character is so heavily influenced by its voice actor. I cannot listen to <laughs> Uncle Talk without thinking about Onizuka and getting that flood of memories from that show. He's just Onizuka to me, but with Nen. I mean, it also happens to be the fact that there are a lot of similarities between the two characters. It's so well cast. I mean, it almost feels... I mean, they must have known, right? There was a deliberate aspect to this casting. After Knuckle retires from the Nen world, he's gonna become a teacher or an animal trainer, but I repeat myself. Duty X, an X question. What's the question? Yep, his name, not Hagia anymore. I was joking about the Hagia thing, I didn't think it would turn out to be relevant to the plot. I would also get exposed as an undercover ant. Yay, the, the coolest power in all of Nen. I actually love this feeling. It's both Shoot and Nikago, and I mean others, but when you recognize like clearly, oh, this is something really good I can do. This is a very clear duty, finally. You know, so much of life is sort of just plotting and ambiguous and you don't know your impact really. You try to do your best in the hopes that, that will lead to good things. You have a general faith that it will have good consequences that perhaps you'll never see. But every now and then you're like, oh, this thing that I'm doing right now is really huge and, and important. And if you have a mind for that, it has a real magnetism. I think one really helpful element or tool of higher pursuits, having the tools to sort of create that for yourself, sort of make it out of the abstract. But every now and then, just based on circumstance and luck, you find yourself on a stage where you have something to do. And it's an amazing feeling, if not also terrifying. Like, he doesn't know, he doesn't know Palm at all. But right, yeah. It's for Kalua, and it would make people happy. Very clear focus and function. And that alone earned Akago's respect in me. It's a respect chain. Maybe she's in the truck. We got money for elevator scales and passcodes, but not food. Oh, wow, that definitely ensures secrecy. This is all just keep girls in the basement, the dungeon. Is that the whole reason we built this? Like I said, he has a hobby. Do they know this? Someone got gassed? Oh. Right, speaking of decomposing. The Kungle surely doesn't know this. Palm surely doesn't know this. Unless you got it out of Bizaf. Find someone who loves you like Bizaf loves his dungeon. Also, who... Whose Nen power is elevator? My Nen has all the properties of elevator and gas. Bro. Oh, they said bro in English. Is his name just bro? Speaking of comments that did not age well in my videos, at one point I was like, do you know who's not in fighting and having self-doubt? The ants. Fast forward to the suspicion, among other things, like Poof's internal war, as well as the kings, I guess. Oh, no one said he had guns. Is this guy actually a player in this arc? Yo. Yo. Well, I thought you rode the dragon. Is it? Warning. Okay, and this actually connects to something I was thinking about last episode. It seems like Netero wants this. There's a part of this that to him is a game, which I think plays so well into the hor horrible awkwardness is an understatement. Just the, the total, you came in here with the wrong energy feeling of them invading the palace. They came in here with all this bravado, this fun of we're going to go smush some insects and it's going to be glorious. And then they severely injured, potentially killed an innocent girl and watched her friend, their target, grieving. And they're, they're standing there with stupid grins on their faces. The more I think about it, the more painful it becomes. Like, you put on his favorite t-shirt to kill a little girl. The energy is all wrong, all off. They're not prepared. Cohen's like, I already made my conclusion. All Golden heard was wah, 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 wah. <laughs> 
So you know, it's just Charlie Brown parents. This is what we came for. I mean, among, among other things. Well, thank God he's down one eye. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Get him, Knuckle. Yeah, show it twice! Because <laughs> it's that cool. Or is that a third time? It's cute on, on UP. So it's not a countdown. Yeah, we all try it. With any luck, Yubi gets distracted trying to kill this thing. I mean, time is passing. Jikandes. Okay, what this means is that they're literally talking at light speed. Yeah, even though he's visible, it's still an avoidance game to an extent. You get hits in when you, when you can, if you can. You guys can still, I mean, you can get in there. He's alive. Um, he's, he's, and he's gonna stay alive. I'm sure he's fine. Maybe the best thing for him. I hope this one eye ends up being the fatal flaw, the Achilles heel. I mean, you don't need to tell him. Let me just probably tell him to stop. Stop it. Just stay conscious. Sorry I doubted you, Malirion. He'll be in a lot of danger when he gets to the fight in three hours. Also the blood loss. I sort of hate this ability. It's really cool, but like, oh man, it's so uncomfortable. Especially as a smoker. Malirian helping them is really interesting. So a lesser person would have just been like, oh, I guess since my plan didn't work out the way it was scripted, I just sit in the sidelines. Oh, hello. How long can you hold your breath? Yeah, he doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> Smells like very old cigarettes. It's so bad, it's so bad because the panic itself makes the holding the breath harder. Like, unless you're practicing this under this condition, you don't really know how long you can hold your breath. It's a totally different thing, especially as a smoker. We plan redo. I wonder if Malirian's ability would fool the elevator. Suspicion. What is he wearing? <laughs> what is that? Suddenly. Suspicious eggs? What the hell is going on? How does this reflect his personality? I missed something big. Was he always wearing a thong? So there's no explosion if it doesn't land. Very highly neurotic. Can't trust anyone, not even myself. This is only tangentially related, but it comes to mind. I was reading about how there's sort of this death loop that forms if you are very high in openness and neuroticism and low in conscientiousness. Because what happens is you're so open to things that could be true and what you could be and what you want to do, but also possibly highly terrified of getting things wrong. So there's like no substance, nothing can form to your identity and actions. Wolf Dude, aka My Little Pony, is just sort of at war with himself right now, despite his grand plans for world domination. Missed the chance for a product placement. I can't unsee his outfit now, unfortunately. <laughs> I 
<laughs> this spiral. When you defeat yourself. <laughs> oh no, what is going on? He's just on a journey. Who are you really? Also, no, you should not be on Bizef's side for any reason. Well, that took care of itself, amazingly. What an arc. He existed to doubt himself and leave. Bizarre that this is also somehow relatable. I think it would be pretty embarrassing if somehow you could quantify this and look at the reading of how much of your defeat was self-defeat. Like how many of the things you were really worried about that stopped you from doing something turned out to be just big nothings that would have had no consequence or that you were just totally wrong about. That bore no risk or real risk that was very insignificant and would not have made a single dent in your life whatsoever. Things like embarrassment, which really is not the danger it feels like it is. This is a real challenge though. You don't want to be just swimming in self-doubt and that that's the whole thing. But you also don't want to be overly confident, not humble, not evaluate. A couple work throughs I think are in the absence of evidence, don't assume the worst and maybe even assume the best depending on your comfortability with that and your actual risk exposure to the thing, which is another aspect, really honing the lens of what actually is dangerous, what actually is significant. If you can calibrate that correctly, you eliminate a lot of things that feel like risks that aren't. A subset trick for this is to either tell someone whose opinion you really truly respect about your, your worries and listen to how you feel in the telling of it. Just by having a person you respect as a backboard, you will know yourself what is truly authentic and what is just, you know, excuses, etc. Or if you don't have someone like that, imagine that you're a third party listening to your current woes. Granted that you have a reasonable level of empathy for others. If you imagine hearing this problem from someone you don't know and thinking that's not really a big deal, it's not a big deal for you either most likely. A great example of this, basically anytime someone tells you about their breakup and the fact that, oh, she, he's the only one for me, I'm never going to recover. And you're like, they're there, you know, <laughs> you understand that it feels terrible, but also as an outsider, you understand it's really not that significant long-term in your life, most likely. And so that's true for you too. I mean, you're not special. Your relationship also doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter that much. In the grand scheme of things, it's going to be okay. Not that that's at all easy in the moment. And finally, I think you can simultaneously have a, an outlook and also not be so deeply personally attached to it and accept new information as it comes in, making, you know, the truth and intricacy of what's really happening the, the highest priority. Nobody's ever going to have the full picture. You're going to have to just fill in with some defaults in certain areas. And maybe you can specialize in one and create insight in one and synthesize something really useful in, in one or a few. And that's okay. This character was shocking. And I kind of love it. Having seen what I think is the whole thing, maybe not, that Welfin went from, I'm going to become the king to I am war worthless all by himself. Nothing happened. And his own his life and his worth and his, his purpose, his existence, his future. You know who's not doubting themselves right now? Gone in a weird twist of that mistake I made early in this arc. Gone is not questioning his function right now, his task and his allegiance. Yeah, and Dr. Blythe and also an unexpected Person. Oh, what implications does that have on Kamugi's life? Never Peter's a bit busy. First comes Rock. <laughs> this, this coloring, this uh, shadowing on Gon's face. I wonder if she'll remember him. It was very early in her life. <laughs> this is so like, oh my God! Look at this. He's just the devil. He looks like Kazuya, a full devil gene. And no narrator commentary because none is needed. <laughs> just none. We don't need any analysis of that face and that color scheme. Nobody else is in this room right now. I mean, not Kamugi, not Kalua. Big question, huge difficult question. Do you have sympathy for the ants? I mean, I think clearly established that they're human, human enough. Or like human's not even the right word for it. They're complex creatures enough. I've heard that people with strong Nen are really good with animals. I don't think that extends to ants for Gon and maybe not even humans. It's weird, like I didn't expect this at all. I'm getting like a little bit of Eren vibes at this point. I don't think Gon will go to those lengths. But there's definitely that single-minded blindness of focus. Like in an arc that has a lot of questions and subtext about what does it mean to be like a conscious, free individual? Like how much is your, your genes and programming and how much is sort of a higher functioning thing where you're free from just the cycle of DNA and death and rebirth and can make your choices for things outside of just, let's say your lineage, spreading your genes, your base emotional instincts. Gon in a key way seems relatively like linear for lack of a better word. I don't mean he's not complex. I just mean he actually is sort of the opposite end of the spectrum I was just referring to where 
turn. There's no room for doubt. There is no consideration of like, oh, maybe I'm overdoing it. Maybe this is the wrong choice. What is this serving? Who is this for? It's like, you hurt my friend, you must pay. What's fascinating is that Kalua isn't that anymore, but he also, in name, his highest priority is Gon and friendship and backing Gon up. I'm questioning the whole Gon friendship thing. Like, Gon in some ways is a great friend. The friendship feels natural. There is a lot of genuine, warm regard for Kalua. They really enjoy each other's company. They they feed on each other. They help each other grow. All of that feels real to me. But of course, there's that element to Gon where things seem a little bit easy, you know, like easy come, easy go. We're best friends and we love each other, but like that extends as far as it's convenient and useful to me and no further. Like you're going to wrap into my energy. I wonder if maybe part of the reason why he's so pissed and deeply disturbed about Kite isn't just his love and respect for Kite, but also the feeling of powerlessness that Pito gave him. That someone would dare to compromise his self of mastery and command over everything. To give him some benefit of the doubt, I would I would say some of his seeming callousness is just maybe a feeling or assumption that nothing can really go wrong if he's around. He doesn't really have a strong fear reflex. Pito, like Hisoka before her, are threats to that viewpoint in a sense. Like, no, I can come into your world. I can touch you. I can hurt your friends. You are vulnerable. For that matter, I think that's often where strong hate or dislike comes from. It's like you think you were great in this area, you think something was fine and it's central to your worldview, it gives you a sense of safety and peace, and then counter evidence enters in from the outside in the form of a person. So that person becomes very directly a threat to your safety. That's the way your mind sort of links it. Probably the most useful thing in that situation is allowing that to be a mirror of something that turns out you actually do care about and addressing that practically in the way you need to address it. I know this is sort of a lot. I'm kind of overextending here for Gon, but it's just what comes to mind. But I feel like Gon probably won't update. You know, like he's not going to come in and look at the situation and be like, oh, wait, the ants are capable of love. I had it all wrong. You know, I'm wondering what you do if you're Kalua in this situation. You know, if you if you see someone going down this path and you also can see it in a way that they can't see it, you have a little bit more of a bird's eye view of it than they do. And you can see that they're, they're in danger of destroying themselves. So you feel a sense of responsibility to them because of this increased understanding. But also that creates a real danger for you because since they can't see it, they will just pull you down into it. My instinct is to say that you say your part and then like protect yourself. There's this sort of trap where like you think by weakening yourself or making a personal compromise or sacrifice, it will be for the other person and that will be like a lifeline to pull them out of it. But instead, what actually often ends up happening is now that you've weakened yourself, whether it be material, you know, by giving them things you don't have to give or emotionally by making a compromise that actually feels terrible to you and makes you doubt yourself, you now have less strength and less of a footing from which to grab their hand and pull them out. I think you want to keep your self and your strength as intact as possible so that in the event that they can see or they can listen to what you have to say or can accept what you have to give safely without putting yourself in danger, you then have the strongest possible footing from which to extend a hand and then help them in a meaningful way. But you cannot really force it. It is possible to throw all your energy into a black hole and yield no results and both of you being worse off. In fact, I think that's likely what ends up happening. A long time ago in a different series, I said you can only really help people from a place of strength. And that's not the best phrasing in hindsight. But what I mean by that is that there's often a lost component in being of service to others, which is like maximally being in service to yourself. That has a way of reading a little bit selfish, right? Like think about myself first. But I really do think there's something important to that side of the consideration where you're not doing anyone any good by like destroying yourself in the name of helping someone. There are all of these, these magnetic forces, you know, compassion, love, genuine desire to sacrifice, all of which can be beautiful and useful, but at a certain extreme is just like pouring good water into sand on a hot beach. It's just gone. Kalua really truly has Gon's interest at heart, really loves Gon. There's sort of a void that's been formed because all of the focus up to this point was catching up to this ideal of Gon, but then Kalua sort of used that to break into this new territory and find out that the ideal isn't really the ideal. And suddenly he's the one, you know, like he's the, the one with the insight, the true love and the gift and the, the beauty, but things are so established, so set, it's really hard to break. Clue also being at the disadvantage of being reasonable, which creates that very sort of self-doubt that's come up a lot in this episode. Unreasonable people have a way of just like blasting through everything and getting their way, which is a very important thing for reasonable people to figure out. Because if you know that, you then kind of have to engineer that for yourself as a tool at your disposal. So you're not just, you know, bulldozed every time. There's a lot to this. I'm really excited to see how this plays out with the three of them.